Thank you, McKenna. I would now like to give you an overview of some of the initial research projects the Global Pulse team has been working on with partners from UN agencies, academia, and the private sector. First, we looked back at the global economic crisis. We wanted to get a better understanding of how it actually played out in people's lives. For that, we partnered with research teams from 11 UN agencies to look at the crisis through the lens of eight different sectors in 38 countries. The findings painted a diverse picture. Two high-level themes, however, stood out. First, and really not surprisingly, it is difficult to establish causalities between global shocks and local impacts. And second, the data sources available were often too aggregated or too old to give us detailed insights. This is where we believe that digital signals could help. To explore this hypothesis, Global Pulse teamed up for the last six months with data experts from the private sector and academic institutions to conduct five research projects. Before I present a short summary of these main findings, let me express a special thank you to our partners who are here with us today. Crimson Hexagon, the consortium of French research centers and universities led by the Complex Systems Institute of Paris, Ile de France, JANA, Prystats, and SARS. Our first research project tested new ways to undertake surveys more rapidly and with less expense, and not just in a single country, but simultaneously across the world. The tool for these new global surveys, mobile phones, a powerful platform to collect data with a reach, speed, and economy of scale that was unimaginable even a few years ago. We collaborated with JANA, a company with a mobile phone data collection network that reaches more than two billion people in more than 70 countries. We started simple. In August of this year, we began a mobile survey around the globe asking a few questions related to people's well-being. We have already received almost 90,000 answers from over 8,000 volunteer respondents in 30 countries. We asked questions like, were you sick last week? How many days did you work last week? And more subjectively, how did you feel last week? essentially providing a lightweight tool for governments and UN agencies to ask a few targeted questions before designing more complex and expensive household surveys. My hope is that this is, this is very complementary to what people are already doing and already doing well. Um, being able to uh, get a handle on the, the pulse of their, their citizens is, is an important thing and it's something that I think a lot of governments are, are, are take very seriously and, and do reasonably well. My hope is that this, with um, a, this new set of data, these new insights, this new window into the behavior of, of the aggregate population, um, it'll let them do their job even better. Let us take a look at a different type of data online prices of bread. We wanted to find out whether online commodity prices correlate with actual price changes on the street. If they do, this could help policymakers gain important insights into food price inflation day by day, not month by month. For this research, Global Pulse partnered with PriceStats, an economics and technology company that each day tracks the prices of five million products advertised online. It's interesting because although in the developing world um, it's true the number of transactions online is not as larger as the number of transactions in countries uh, like the US for example, uh, a lot of retailers use uh, uh, online websites as a way to uh, promote their, their offline prices. So it's a great advertising uh, mechanism and so by just looking at those retailers, we can have a lot of information about their offline prices. So you don't need to have a lot of e-commerce going on. What you need is to have a lot of um, uh, retailers that choose to uh, offer price information uh, in their websites. We looked at the daily price of bread in six Latin American countries over the last two years, and what we found was interesting. Online bread prices do indeed follow a similar trend as official prices for bread. The difference is that online prices can be obtained daily, whilst consumer price indices in most countries are only pu published on a monthly basis. This allows us to identify spikes in food prices when they happen, 
and it helps us track inflationary trends earlier and with much greater granularity. Our next research project explored whether we can track important thematic shifts in global attention through mining media articles. Tens of thousands of online news articles are generated around the world every day, far more than any of us have time to read. For this, we partnered with a consortium of French research centers and universities led by the Complex Systems Institute of Paris, Ile-de-France. We analyzed how Francophone media report on food security issues over the past eight years. We did this by tracking emerging news trends. We first identified a set of keywords and phrases related to food security. We then retrieved 20,000 related articles published between 2005 and 2011. The contents of these articles were analyzed and organized in thematic clusters, which can be traced back to specific news articles or aggregated in a big picture representation. This allowed us not only to track these issues over time, but also to show their location. For example, this is how the global economic crisis unfolded. You can see that as it gained momentum, coverage shifted from a focus on humanitarian issues to food price volatility. Then it changed to social unrest. Interestingly, children's vulnerability has been a topic of interest throughout the crisis. In our next research project, we investigated what online forums and blogs could tell us about unemployment. We explored two questions. First, can online conversations provide an early indicator of impending job losses? And second, can they help policymakers enrich their understanding of how communities cope? For this research project, Global Pulse partnered with the SAS Institute. We started with online conversations in Ireland and the US where we knew people were posting frequently about unemployment. We compared the mood expressed in these conversations with official unemployment statistics. In Ireland, we found that fluctuations in the anxiety and confusion score mirrored fluctuations in the unemployment rate. Interestingly, these changes preceded changes in the unemployment rate. Our analysis also revealed that people talk extensively about the impacts of job losses. In Ireland, we noticed an increase in the number of conversations about travel cancellations months after a rise in the unemployment rate. In the US, it was conversations expressing feelings of anger that preceded actual job losses. Following these job losses, people first talked about difficulties to afford housing and then about transportation, losing their car, having to downgrade to a smaller car, or relying more on public transportation. What this initial research shows is that online conversation could potentially enrich official unemployment statistics. Our researchers have developed a way to take something qualitative like social media and quantify or score it based upon the topics discussed and the feelings expressed on those topics. And once something is quantified, we can use the same universe of statistics tools that are provided to national statistics offices to analyze millions of data points and be able to let the data tell the story. The final project looked at whether Twitter could provide real-time insights into issues that people are concerned about. And it turns out if you want to study Twitter, there is no better place to do this than Indonesia, whose residents tweet nearly one and a half million times a day. And here you see a map of tweet density in Jakarta. For this research project, Global Pulse partnered with Crimson Hexagon, a company that analyzes social media. We wanted to know whether people tweet about food. And yes, Indonesians clearly use Twitter to talk about food. We found more than 14 million tweets related to food over the past 16 months. The number of tweets can be correlated with real events. For instance, here you see an increase in people talking about food at the beginning of Ramadan, followed by a dip at the end. When we looked at tweets specifically about the price of rice, we in fact found that these conversations closely mirror official food inflation statistics. So I think what we're really hoping to learn is if there's an additional, if there's an additional strategy we can employ to get some insight into um, what might be causing pressure or stress on 
uh, on people in their daily lives in in a way that's more real time. It's not next quarter when the economic indicators come out, it's this afternoon or tomorrow. What this initial research has shown is that it is possible to conduct simultaneous rapid global mobile pho phone surveys at massive scale, to gain insight into food price inflation day by day, to reveal emerging trends and news during fast changing crises, to use social media for a deeper understanding of unemployment, and to leverage Twitter as a real-time indicator of public concerns. The research findings we presented are only a first exploration into how we could use digital data. They confirm its enormous potential, we believe. To advance this work, we will be working over the coming months with our partner countries, Indonesia and Uganda, to dig deeper into these data sources.